Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Les Wong, the president of San Francisco State University. I have the distinct honor and pleasure of welcoming you to campus uh, today. Those of you in academic regalia may remove your caps if you so choose. Also, for everyone's convenience, we ask that you please turn off your cell phones. Before we begin this afternoon's celebration, um, I would like to take a moment to thank the San Francisco State University Orchestra and our student music musicians for that beautiful performance. Let's thank them. <laughs> Welcome to our 2019 All University Undergraduate Honors Convocation. This afternoon, we celebrate the scholarly success and special achievements of our most talented, most determined, and most accomplished San Francisco State students. More than 100 of them shared, okay. I think we're going to have some fun at celebrating this. During their years here, all of these students have met the highest standards, rising to the challenges put to them by our exceptional faculty. They have enriched our lives, for education is truly a two-way process. And we trust that we have enriched their lives as well. We want our honor students to know uh, that their achievements have been recognized, and so we have gathered here at the end of the academic year to applaud them for their exemplary work and wish them well as they prepare for the next step. We trust they are leaving with an education that has prepared them to inquire freely, to think, and to analyze independently. And they have often heard me say, they have to own their own mind. And we trust that they are leaving with that distinctive feature of a San Francisco State University education that we all cherish very dearly. The ability to apply their knowledge in ways that will better the world around them. Attending, attending San Francisco State is more than an education. It's an experience and true preparation for living a life of principle and value. Representatives of our university community are here to join us in this convocation. You will meet many of them as the afternoon proceeds, but I would like to introduce some of them at this moment. Will the following individuals please stand as I introduce you? Lolo Hong, Vice President for Student Affairs and Enrollment Management. Lori Beth Way, Dean of Undergraduate Education and Academic Planning. Deborah Masters, University Librarian. Lily G, Uni University Women's Association President. And her members are the official convocation greeters and the host of our reception at the Student Center later on. Our two stage marshals are John Carlos Perea, Associate Professor of American Indian Studies. And William Christmas, Professor of English Language and Literature. And I would also like to recognize our faculty marshals, Dorothy Ceruta, Professor of Africana Studies. and Constance Ulasiewicz, Chair and Professor of Family Interiors, Nutrition, and Apparel. Let's give them all a hand. We teach some of the most talented students in the world, 
And when they first arrive on campus, we introduce those talented students to one of the world's finest teaching faculties who have come to San Francisco State out of a desire to make a real difference in the lives of students. That intersection between student and faculty is a recipe for unmatched, outstanding talent. To acknowledge that relationship, each year we ask the chief representative of the faculty, the chair of the Academic Senate, to address our honorees and our guests. I'd like to introduce the Academic Senate Chair, Nancy Gerber. Dr. Nancy Gerber came to the Bay Area in 1993 for a postdoctoral fellowship in pharmaceutical chemistry and later joined San Francisco State as a faculty member in 1996. She is a professor of chemistry and biochemistry in the College of Science and Engineering and has, and has led the faculty of San Francisco State these past two years as chair of the Academic Senate and as of last week, was reelected to a third term. For two, for two decades, Dr. Gerber has served San Francisco State as a highly respected teacher and, a, and an accomplished scholar. In addition to her teaching, her research has involved over 30 undergraduate and graduate students and has resulted in more than 20 peer-reviewed publications and book chapters. She, more recently, she has focused on understanding the use of undergraduate students as peer-led instructors and in developing labs and demonstration for general, demonstrations for general chemistry that can increase their knowledge of chemistry and a sense of engagement on the part of her students. Dr. Gerber is a first-rate teacher and scholar, but she also lends her talents in making the community around her a better place. In short, she is a great citizen of the university. And I'm now pleased to present Dr. Nancy Gerber's presentation. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And apparently I can't read because I wasn't supposed to come up until after that introduction, but thank you for those kind words. So good afternoon, everyone. It's truly an honor to be here with the 2019 undergraduate honorees and their families and friends. Um, I'm just so honored to be able to celebrate with all of you and joining in uh, recognizing your accomplishments. So as my... Uh, Department might indicate I'm a scientist by training, and so speech writing and public speaking are not necessarily my strong suits. Uh, the good news is because of those deficits, I tend to be a little on the shorter side, so you shouldn't have to listen to it too long. Um, so I'm here because of my role on campus as the chair of the Academic Senate. Now, I'm guessing that most of you won't have any idea what that means. Uh, and honestly, for students, it won't affect you directly anyway for much longer. But I would like to spend a few minutes explaining its importance to you while you are on this campus and why it matters for you in the future. So the Academic Senate reflects a form of shared governance in which the members of the SF State community on campus share responsibility for governing our institution along with the administration. We recommend policies and practices to the president and provost, some of which have huge impacts on our students. Students, have you ever wondered why classes meet when they do? There's a Senate policy on that. Why is there so much information on your course syllabi? There's a policy for that as well. The fact that you have an entire week of Thanksgiving break off, as well as a week of spring break, well, that's our policy too. The requirements that you had to meet to graduate are specified in an academic senate policy as well. So what happens when we fail in our responsibilities as citizens of San Francisco State University, either because of inattention or expediency? We end up often with bureaucratic processes that have inexplicable deadlines because they're set by staff who don't have enough interaction with students to appreciate their impacts. Or we end up with processes that require more hoops to jump through than a Cirque du Soleil performance. We end up with finals exams being given at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday, two or three days before Christmas, when there are no services open and many students are trying to get home to their families. We end up with student grievance procedures that can't be followed because the positions that are in it are no longer exist. We end up with requirements for graduation that delay our graduate students' graduation rather than supporting it. 
We end up with students' GPAs being lowered when they have to repeat a course because the grades in the two courses are being averaged. That last one is one that sticks out to me for a couple of reasons. For the entire time that I had been at SF State, and I advised a lot of students, and I was told when a student repeated a course, the university averaged the two grades, just the way it was done. Never occurred to me to ask why. Why couldn't the old grade just be replaced with the new one? Well, it turns out it could have. In about 2009, the chancellor's office issued an executive order that allowed this, but SF State didn't take it up and didn't implement it until 2016, seven years later. Seven years of students' GPAs being reduced because no one stepped up and asked why. If not you, then for shared governance at SF State to work, it must reflect the needs of all of its constituents, faculty, staff, and students. But to do that, all three groups must be encouraged and welcomed into service and must care enough to be willing to serve. If any one group fails to meet its obligations, we end up with a system that doesn't work for any of us. Take a second and think about whether you knew of any of the policies that I just mentioned and whether you knew that students played a role in setting those up. Have you ever complained about them? Did you do anything to change them if you didn't agree with them? If not you, then... Now let's turn to what's going to happen in your life in a few days. You are going to be dropped into a new world of shared governance, one in which each of us carries a responsibility to be active participants. You're gonna to have to abide by a shockingly large number of laws that were passed by politicians who were elected largely by people like you and me. And while we can argue about gerrymandering and the degree to which your vote matters, there's plenty that you can do outside formal government. One of the things that has shocked me at San Francisco State is that the weight of a very small number of emails, calls, or letters can have a big impact on administrative action. This translates into the so-called real world as well. I once heard that when a number of contacts about a certain issue hit a politician's office, they started to act. Even if the numbers themselves were very low, each one represented a much larger number of people who had failed to voice their opinion. So next time you run across a rule or a regulation or even a law that doesn't make sense, don't just accept it. Ask why. Why does it have to be this way? What would it take to make change? And how can I speak truth to power and have power listen? With the issues facing our country today, climate change springs to mind. We can no longer stand back and fail to act. Because if not you, then maybe no one. If not you, then maybe our climate continues to warm. Our rights continue to be taken away. Our voice continues to be ignored. If not you, thank you for listening and congratulations. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce the Provost and the Vice President for Academic Affairs, Jennifer Summit. Thank you, Senate Chair Gerber, for reminding our graduates of their responsibility in the shared governance of our community, country, and world. We all join in the hope that a San Francisco State education prepares them to take their place as active co-creators in the world that they enter. Well, good afternoon, everyone. This afternoon, we are honoring for their outstanding achievements at San Francisco State a number of our wonderful students. First, we will honor those students who were inducted as members of Phi Beta Kappa. Next, we'll honor 90 undergraduate students who are graduating in the top one and a half percent of the students from their academic colleges, many of them graduating mag magna cum laude or summa cum laude. The third group includes 58 undergraduates who have been selected by their academic departments and programs to receive special recognition for excellence in their particular fields. The final group includes six students who have been identified to represent all of the graduating seniors in their respective colleges. Each of the six colleges is, is invited to select one outstanding student whose exemplary achievements meet our highest hopes for all of our graduates. 
These six students seated here in the first row will receive the symbolic investiture of the hood at our commencement ceremonies on Tuesday, May 28th. This year marks the 43rd anniversary of the first installation of our Phi Beta Kappa members, at chapter members at San Francisco State University. The president of the university chapter is Dr. Masahiko Minami, who is in the audience this afternoon. Dr. Minami, will you please stand? San Francisco State upholds liberal education as the foundation of our degrees, so named because it liberates the mind. Liberal education represents a holistic, values-driven approach to learning in all of the disciplines. Phi Beta Kappa, the oldest honorary society in the United States, recognizes those students who have successfully demonstrated breadth and depth in, of study in the sciences, humanities, and the behavioral and social sciences. The National Society of Phi Beta Kappa established Omicron of California at San Francisco State University 43 years ago in 1976. Since then, only 966 San Francisco State students have met the requirements to be elected to Phi Beta Kappa out of a pool of more than 200,428 200, 200, graduating students. As you might expect, the selection process is rigorous. I'm proud to introduce the Phi Beta Kappa members who are able to join us this afternoon who've been initiated in, into the Omicron of California chapter. I ask that each student please stand as I call your name and remain standing until all are named. They are Serena David. <laughs> Kevin Wong, and Nancy Yang. Please join me in congratulating these students for their outstanding academic achievements. You may be seated. I would now like to introduce the Dean of the College of Business, Dean Yimyu Wong, who will present the faculty representatives and students accorded high academic honors from the College of Business. Thank you, Provost Summit. I would like to introduce the chairs and faculty members representing the academic departments in the College of Business and ask them to remain standing until all faculty members have been introduced. They are Amy Chang, Accounting, Teresa Roder, Decision Sciences, Susanna Jenko, Economics, Yuli Su, Finance, Denise Klein Richard, General Business and Interim Associate Dean. Susan Rowe, Hospitality and Tourism Management. Ryan Smith, Hospitality and Tourism Management. Guillaume Fadu, Information Systems. Robin Simeon, International Business. John Logan, Labor and Employment Studies. Bob Bonner, Management. Mahmoud Hussein, Marketing. Please be seated. As I introduce the honor students from the College of Business, I would ask that each student please stand and remain standing until all of the students from that category have been presented. Please hold your applause until all the students have been called. These are the students graduating in the top one and a half percent for the College of Business. In accounting, Brian Agurla Bestadas. Marlena Emerald June, Serafina Kremberger, Ha Kui, Brian Lau, Ying Li Fu, Teresa Nguyen, Emily Nunes Rosario, Kimberly Boston Zabala, 
Xiao Li Zhou, in Business Administration, Johanna Fonari, in Decision Sciences, Emily Guan, Olivia Zai, in Economics, Nicholas Neth Matthew Greech, in Finance, Michael Anthony Fossey, Xiao Xuan Sung, Olivia Zai, Dylan Cherney, in Information Systems, Emily Guan, in International Business, Ning Chao, Kevin Huang, in Management, Wei M. Cross Ong, Kang Liu, in Marketing, John Paul Ramirez, Anna Walk. Please join me in congratulating our honorees. You may be seated. Now I would like to present those students who have been selected by their departments for special recognition. Alexia Barber, Accounting. Olivia Shai, Decision Sciences. Nicholas Matthew Greech, Economics. Dylan Cherney, Finance. Matthew Hurt, General Business. Wen Feng Ma, Hospitality and Tourism Management. Emily Guan, Information Systems. Kevin Huang, International Business. Chuan Huin, Labor and Employment Studies. Wei M. Crossong, Management. Anna Walk, Marketing. Congratulations, students. <laughs> you may be seated. As Provost Summit mentioned earlier, each of the colleges selects one student to receive the hood this afternoon on behalf of all its graduates. I am very pleased to introduce this year's hood recipient from the College of Business, Olivia Zai. Zai is a double major in, in, in Decision Sciences and Finance, graduating summa cum laude. She is a Bay Area native who is passionate about helping people. In high school, for instance, Zai performed more than 700 hours of community service for the elementary and middle schools that she once attended in Pacifica. She brought that commitment to service to San Francisco State. During her sophomore year, she was a student partner for Wiley Plus, helping other students learn to navigate the web-based tool which enriches coursework with online content. Zha was also a student panelist at the Wiley Teaching and Learning Summit, speaking about trust and engagement in the classroom. For the past two years, Zai has been a tutor for both the Decision Sciences Department's Operations Management course and the Finance Department's Business Finance course. She also served as the president of the Decision Sciences Student Association and led a group of students to the Bay Area Decision Sciences Summit. Quote, I love working with my fellow classmates and helping them build their confidence in the two fields I am passionate about. I couldn't have done that without my supportive professors. Helping my fellow classmates succeed is something I'm really proud of, end quote, said Zai. Congratulations, Olivia. We are proud of your accomplishment and look forward to your future success. It's my pleasure now to introduce Dean Cynthia Gritzit, who will present the faculty representatives and the students from the Graduate College of Education. Good afternoon, everyone. The Graduate College of Education is the only college in San Francisco State University that is primarily a graduate school preparing students who already have their baccalaureate degrees to be professional educators and service providers. 
The Graduate College of Education offers one undergraduate degree, a Bachelor of Arts in Communicative Disorders within the Department of Speech, Language, and Hearing Sciences. Representing the faculty from the Graduate College of Education's undergraduate program this afternoon is Dr. Betty Yu, Speech, Language, and Hearing Sciences. The following student from the Department of, Spe of Speech, Language, and Hearing Sciences has been selected as our department honoree. Leslie Peng, Speech, Language, and Hearing Sciences. Now I am proud to introduce Yusra Muhammad Ali, the undergraduate hood recipient for the Graduate College of Education. <laughs> Yusra Muhammad Ali draws her inspiration from her parents, who brought her and her siblings to the US from Yemen when she was a baby. Their encouragement to pursue an education led her to become the first in her family to attend college. She is graduating with a BS in Communicative Disorders, the culmination of her childhood goal of becoming an educator and her desire to make a difference in children's lives. Arabic-speaking speech-language pathologists are few and far between, she said. Becoming a speech pathologist will give me the necessary skills to give a voice to those who are most vulnerable, the people who are often ignored and overlooked. While at San Francisco State University, Ali served as a tutor for incoming juniors in anatomy and physiology courses and volunteered at the Scottish Rite Childhood Language Center to teach creative writing to fourth and fifth grade students. She also worked as a teaching assistant in San Francisco State's Early Childhood Education Center, working with three to five-year-old children. Ali will return to San Francisco State in the fall to work toward a master's degree in communicative disorders and pursue her dream of becoming a bilingual and bicultural speech language pathologist, serving children with complex communication needs. Congratulations, Yusra. We wish you much success in the next phase of your academic life. If you'll join me over here. So excited, I forgot to introduce the next person. And now I'm pleased to introduce my colleague, Amy Suyoshi, Dean of the College of Ethnic Studies, who will now present the faculty representatives and honor students from the College of Ethnic Studies. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Dean Grutzik. The department chairs and faculty from the College of Ethnic Studies in attendance this afternoon are Dorothy Tsuruta, Africana, Africana Studies. <laughs> Melissa Nelson, American Indian Studies. John Carlos Perea, American Indian Studies. Russell Jung, Asian American Studies. Maria Quintana, Latina, Latino Studies. And uh, Donalissa Fisher, Africana Studies. I believe I saw her walk in. The high academic honor students for the College of Ethnic Studies are in Asian American Studies, Maria, I'm sorry, Mariah Manibusan. In Latina, Latino Studies, Stephanie Baraspi. Please congratulate, join me in congratulating our honorees. The following students are our departmental honorees. In Africana Studies, Isis Tiana Dorley. Lilith King-Smithson. 
in Asian American Studies, Moriah Manibusan. In American Indian Studies, Nureldin Maslu. In Latina, Latino Studies, Stephanie Baraspi. It is my honor to introduce this year's Hood recipient for the College of Ethnic Studies, Moriah Manibusan. She is graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Asian American Studies, College of Ethnic Studies, and Communication Studies in the College of Liberal and Creative Arts. As a peer mentor for San Francisco State's Asian American and Pacific Islander Student Services Office, graduating senior, senior Mora Manibusan combined her interest in teaching with a passion for ethnic studies to mentor first year students, an experience she describes as deeply personal and rewarding. Quote, as a, mixed, as a person of mixed heritage, Chamorro, Korean, and Filipina, Asian American Studies has given me the opportunity to explore my ethnicities and process through the trauma of our community has had to endure, she said. The San Jose native was also a resident assistant for the university's first Asian American and Pacific Islander floor on campus, hosting annual sexual assault awareness programs every April. She was named resident assistant of the year two years in a row and founded the first residential housing association, Asian American and Pacific Islander organization in the United States. <laughs> Through this group, she created plans for educational programming and community engagement. Quote, I wanted to create something that is tangible and will be here for generations to come, she said. I hope it is a legacy I will remem be remembered for here at SF State. Upon graduation, Mani Busan plans to work with nonprofit groups serving the Asian American and Pacific Islander communities. Mariah, thank you for incorporating into your work the need to serve the greater good. Your desire to help our society is applauded. We wish you much success in all the future holds for you. Congratulations. I would now like to introduce Dean Alvin Alvarez, who will present the faculty representatives and honor students from the College of Health and Social Sciences. Thank you, Dean Suyoshi. The department chairs and faculty representatives here this afternoon from the College of Health and Social Sciences, please stand as I call your name. Molly Shea, Child and Adolescent Development, Jennifer Stimson, Family Interiors, Nutrition and Apparel. Mary Beth Love, Health Education. Kate Hamill, Kinesiology. Larry Vitale, School of Nursing. Nina Roberts, Recreation, Parks and Tourism. And Jocelyn Hermoso, Social Work. Please join me in congratulating our faculty. The following students from the College of Health and Social Sciences are among those graduating with high academic honors. In apparel design and merchandising, Kaylee Miller. In child and adolescent, <laughs> in child and adolescent development, Sonia Chen. In criminal justice studies, Madison Mitchell. In dietetics, Guadalupe Orwella. And also Natalie Noel Brandenburg. In kinesiology, Zachary Ashmore. Also in kinesiology, Kayla Marie Duplian, Ileana Mercado, and Marissa Ortega. In nursing, Veronica Bianculli, and Nerio Talai Sullivan, Jr. Please join me in applauding these group of students.
You can be seated. Our students here this afternoon who are given special recognition by their departments are Stephanie Annette Estrada, Child and Adolescent Development, Guadalupe Orwella, Family Interiors, Nutrition and Apparel, Heaven Estrada, Health Education, Kale Blake, Kinesiology, Beverly Leona Fong, School of Nursing, Neera John Chand, Public Affairs and Civic Engagement, and Laura Fernandez, Herna excuse me, Laura Fernanda Hernandez, Recreation, Parks and Tourism. Please join me in honoring these students. You can be seated. This year, on behalf of the college, I'm pleased to announce uh, this year's Hood recipient for the College of Health and Social Sciences, Neera John Chand. Who is receiving his bachelor's degree in criminal justice studies. Neera John Chand was born in Nepal in the midst of a civil war. The violence he experienced in his youth fueled his ambition for a life of public service a goal which he sharpened when he pursued a BA in criminal justice studies from San Francisco State. At the age of 16, Chan started a four-month journey to the United States, exposing him to the hardships experienced by many in, South, in the South and Central America. And upon arriving in the U.S. without documentation, he was detained for six months, time he used to teach himself English. After eventually enrolling in Berkeley City College, Chan transferred to San Francisco State, where both the his university's history of activism and his courses inspired him to deepen his commitment to social justice and human rights. He says, quote, criminal justice studies teaches us the flaws of the system, policy and inequality. All the injustices in the criminal justice system are issues of human rights, unquote. Chand has been accepted into the Human Rights Education Graduate Program at the University of San Francisco, where he'll work toward a career that allows him to serve those with experiences similar to his. Nirajan, we commend you on all you have had to overcome to be here in this moment. Celebrate it, for you have truly earned it. Congratulations. I am now pleased to introduce my colleague, Associate Dean Troy Carlton, who will present the faculty representatives and honor students from the College of Liberal and Creative Arts. Dr. Carlton. Thank you, Dean Alvarez. I'd like to introduce the department chairs and faculty members representing the academic departments and programs for the College of Liberal and Creative Arts. They are Mark Griffin, Anthropology, Gwen Allen, Art, Julian Hoxter, Cinema, Sarah Rouse, Classics, Dane Johnson, Comparative and World Literature, Karen Lovas, Communication Studies, Ron, Roy Conboy, Creative Writing, Mary Hulick, School of Design, Paul Morris, English Language and Literature, Trevor Getz, History, Carol Bertram, Humanities, Mahmoud Manshapuri, International Relations, Laura Moorhead, Journalism, Tanya Augsburg, Liberal Studies, Masahiko Miyanami, Modern Languages and Literatures, and Austa Sveindotter, Philosophy. Thank you. You can be seated. Now I'm going to introduce the students from the College of Liberal and Creative Arts with high academic honors. In anthropology, Artie Dark. In art history, Kitty Tierling. In broadcasting and electronic communication arts, Samuel Chua. In cinema, 
Gary Moore. In Classics, Gabrielle Silva. In Communication Studies, Victoria Jane Bravo and Mariah Menabusen. In Creative Writing, Anthony J. Sorensen. In English Education, Katherine Rinkenberger. In Humanities, Ryan Harris and Gina Mateo. In International Relations, Maria Jose Lozano Sanabria. In Linguistics, Maxwell Goodwin. In Liberal Studies, Hermandeep Carr. In Music, Forrest Ballman. In Philosophy, Eric Draper. And in Visual Communication Design, Nam, Nam An Nguyen. Please join me in congratulating these outstanding students. You may be seated. You may be seated. The following students have been selected by their departments and programs to receive special recognition for excellence in their respective field. And kindly withhold your applause until I name all of the students in this category. Artie Dark, Anthropology. Janice Noel Ivoret, Art. Gary Moore, Cinema. Gabrielle Silva, Classics. Garrick Wilhelm, Communication Studies. Josette Marsh, Comparative and World Literature. Anthony J. Sorensen, Creative Writing. Catherine Rinkenberger, English Language and Literature. Gina Mateo, Humanities and Liberal Studies, Humanities. Hermandi Carr, Humanities and Liberal Studies, Liberal Studies. Maria Jose Lozano Sanabria, International Relations. Nancy Young, Modern Languages and Literature, Chinese. Montana Yaley, Modern Languages and Literature, Italian. Forrest, <laughs> sorry, bad intonation on that one. Um, Forrest Ballman, Music. Eric Draper, Philosophy. Alexandra De La Rosa, Political Science. and. Nam An Nguyen School of Design. Please help me congratulate them. You may be seated. I am honored to introduce the undergraduate hood recipient for the College of Liberal and Creative Arts, Maria Jose Lozano Sanabria. Maria Jose Lozano Sanabria moved to the United States from her native Colombia when she was 14. That experience as a child migrant informs the work and research she does today around migration policies. A summa cum laude graduating senior in international relations, Sanabria serves as a managing director for the International Relations Journal, as well as the project assistant for the College of Liberal and Creative Arts Social Science Alliance. She said, we help to promote uh, social science and majors to show the importance of communication and critical thinking skills. I'm very passionate about social sciences and its place in contributing to society, unquote. Sanabria was drawn to San Francisco State by the quality and social justice interests of its faculty. Both her thesis on transformative justice in post-conflict settings and her paper on the land rights of internally displaced people explore methods of peace building and conflict resolution. Quote, something I've really enjoyed is to be able to bring my identity and experiences as an immigrant to my discipline and to analyze what's going on in my home country of Colombia, end quote, Sanabria said. Sanabria speaks English, Spanish, and French fluently. She has earned, interned with Human Rights Watch and will attend the prestigious Sciences Po University in Paris for graduate school. Congratulations, Maria, on your achievements and the significance of your work in supporting our immigrant populations. We wish you much success in Paris and the future. Now to present the faculty and to honor the outstanding students from the College of Science and Engineering, I yield the podium to Dean Domingo. Thank you, Associate Dean Carlton, very much. 
The chairs and faculty from the College of Science and Engineering here this afternoon are Laura Burris, Biology, Teaster Bear Jr., Chemistry and Biochemistry, Arno Puder, Computer Science, Xiaorong Zhang, Engineering, Andrew Oliphant, Geography and Environment, Eric Su, Mathematics, and Guav Suri, Psychology. Thank you. The students accorded high academic honors from the College of Science and Engineering are in biochemistry, Patrick Ma Chen, in biology, cell and molecular, Diana Quinn Do, in computer engineering, Chloe Zerbel, in computer sciences, Ferros Alize, as well as Paolo Shishido. In environmental sciences, Shamim Musavi. In geography, Sharina David. In psychology, Stephanie Kirkman. Paola Leon. Alexis Mitchell. Sarah Purnell. Shalvina Singh. Jenna Soykuk, Hannah Valdez, Brenda Wong, and Statistics, Nicholas Matthew Grek. Congratulations. <laughs> the following students have been selected for special recognition as department honorees. John Paul Bugai, Biology. Patrick Ma Chen, Biochemistry. Paolo Shishido, Computer Science. Chloe Zerbo, Engineering. Shamin Musavi, Geography and Environment. Nicholas Matthew Grek, Mathematics. Salvina Singh Psychology. Congratulations. I am very pleased to introduce Chloe Sobrell, the undergraduate hood recipient for the College of Science and Engineering. Chloe is receiving her Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering. After creating an augmented reality mobile application for an internship, Chloe saw potential in the technology that went far beyond video games. Quote, we are living in a time of great technological wealth, she said. This is so much opportunity to provide aid and enrichment to consumers whose primary goal is not simply entertainment, but physical recovery and well-being. Chloe is graduating with a BS in computer engineering, and her research has been focused on developing a low-cost, interactive, virtual reality system to aid the rehabilitation of stroke survivors. She won first place for this work at the 2018 CSU Research Competition in the area of undergraduate engineering and computer science. And later that year, she won the first, she was the first author of a peer-reviewed paper on her research published in the Proceedings of the 2018 IEEE Global Humanitarian Technology Conference. After, So in three minutes ago, before we walked into this room, Chloe informed me that she has accepted a position at Ripple. Now, Ripple is a really interesting company at the cutting edge of finance technology, but the co-founder of Ripple is also an alum of San Francisco State and one of the most generous donors to our institution. 
He recently donated over $20 million to our university. So congratulations for joining a wonderful company. <laughs> so we are honored and proud you chose to major in computer engineering. We wish you endless success in all of your future pursuits. Congratulations. It is now my pleasure to welcome President Wong back to the podium for this afternoon's closing remarks one last time. You know, it's never appropriate for a president to correct the dean of the College of Science and Engineering, but the gift was actually 25 million dollars. Yeah. What's well, five in, in this whole? I hope she'll forgive me for teasing her. Thank you, Dean. And I would like to pause and um, give ourselves a moment to acknowledge our remarkable deans. They give us, we, let's give them a round of applause for their outstanding support <laughs> and service to our students, faculty, in San Francisco State. They can each tease me till tomorrow. Dean Domingo gets an extra day uh, for that. That's great. This afternoon, we have seen what it makes San Francisco State such an extraordinary place. We are a public university where individuals established a higher education legacy for their families and generations to follow. We're developing the skills and talents of our citizens builds a legacy of success for our state, our nation, and indeed for our world. Our students are as talented and as exciting as a group you will find anywhere. And their varied backgrounds, cultures, and experience uh, enhance our excellence. This Honors Convocation offers an exceptional opportunity to make a large university a little smaller and a little more personal. We heard a very rich array of individual stories this afternoon as our Hood recipients were introduced. If we had the same opportunity to learn about each student on this stage, I guarantee you we would be awed by the courage, intellectual breadth, accomplishments, and perseverance of every last student on this stage. This has been a proud afternoon of celebration and admiration of our outstanding scholars. So let me ask you once again to celebrate these outstanding students, soon to be graduates, who have made this such an inspiring afternoon. And, at, and I'd like to take this moment to ask our students to stand, if you wouldn't mind. Just stand for a moment here. And I have a reason for asking these students to stand. And that reason is all of you in the audience. And we all stand to applaud you, the unsung heroes of our honor students, parents, friends, relatives, children, and mentors who have supported our students throughout this stage in their academic career. I want to thank you for your investment that has nurtured these incredible young scholars. And as you have heard, many of our honor students would not have been successful without your support. Therefore, it seems only appropriate for all of us here on stage, our honor students and our faculty seated in the audience, to salute you, the families and friends who have guided and encouraged these students throughout the years. So will our honorees and faculty please join me in a round of applause for our audience.
Okay, you can be seated. Tonight's celebration does not end with this ceremony. Thanks to the University Women's Association, which sponsored our first honors conversation, convocation 42 years ago, and has done so every year since. And we are all invited to a reception at Taqueria Garasol in the Cesar Chavez Student Center. And I look forward to seeing all of you there. I now ask that our guests remain seated until our honor students and faculty have left the theater. Students are responded, are, <laughs> students are reminded to stop by New Knuth Hall to pick up their award certificates before going to the reception. Our 2019 honors convocation has come to a close. As you, our honor graduates, are soon to leave us, know that you go with our love and our confidence. Wherever the next step in your life takes you, you will forever be one of ours, a San Francisco State alumnus and proud Gator. It has been our pleasure to prepare you for what lies ahead. So will the members of the platform party, the honorees, and our university faculty please rise. And platform party, please join me in exiting the stage. <laughs> 